Georgia Tornay is a 12-year industry veteran. They are a barber and hairstylist hybrid and multi-business owner. They are a consultant, educator, international runway artist, and spends their time teaching people how to create a space that is authentically yours and advocates and educates for providing safe and accessible gender-neutral spaces for salons and barbershops. Today, we're going to dive into transitioning your business, if it's not already, to providing a non-gender-based option for services. Welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong Show. My name is Robert Hughes, and I'm your host. And today, I'm here with Georgia. How are you doing today? Pretty good. I'm excited. <laughs> awesome. I'm happy well, to be uh, back. <laughs> yeah, it's so like last time, anybody that's just tuning in and hasn't heard Georgia's story, uh, I highly recommend you go back and check it out. It's really, really good and uh, give you a lot of context to this conversation we're having today. Uh, however, that said, if anybody didn't watch the last your last our last conversation, the last episode with you, would you give us like a quick high level uh, run through of your I mean, it, your story is so multifaceted that it's it's going to be I it you know, do your best to get it, give them like a little recap of, uh, of your story. Um, well, I guess the recap of my story would be, uh, the silver lining would just be, um, to kind of take risks and to know, no business. Um, even if you don't like take classes and things like that, because it comes from me just being 23 and owing and going into owning a barbershop, um, for seven years and then expanding it and, and kind of evolving from there, from this 23 year old who knew nothing about business to, to now basically. Yeah. Yeah. And also I compare some of the stuff I liked about your, your story is that you had this experience where people, that you had a client, like you had to get out, you had a 30 day to uh, notice to vacate at your, at your barbershop, a client became your investor and your hard money lender to buy a building to then open up a barbershop in which you used half of the building. And later on, you were able to rent it out to a tattoo shop. So you were became a landlord and then you eventually sold or handed over your business and then you were just the landlord. And then I think that you were also started maybe working in a booth rental or yeah. a salon as well um, in a different geographic area. And uh, you went through this whole multifaceted, like the, the entrepreneurial part of it is really good. So I highly recommend you go back and watch it and listen to it. But you were also, there's also an element in there that I didn't actually um, know that was going to be part of your story until it happened in the moment was that you hadn't told anybody, you hadn't come out to any of your clients and, right. uh, you know, no one knew that, you know, you were queer, as you say. And I thought that was interesting because like one, I didn't, exp I didn't know that that was part of your story. And two, you were also uh, doing it from a, like a lo pragmatic, lo logical perspective uh, as well in terms of like how you thought about the business. So I thought that was really, really powerful. And uh, so I highly recommend everyone go back and check that out because it, uh, it's definitely a good lesson for anybody in, in that wants to be in business in general. Um, okay, so now today uh, we're talking about what what you're doing now and that is the educating and advocating for safe accessible and gender neutral spaces and uh one of the conversations that kind of comes up a lot is well i'm scared to change my prices over you know if you have more than 10 percent male clientele then uh you know traditionally male clientele that you're doing you know lower price haircuts for if it's a large percentage of your clientele like it makes sense that you might be nervous and making these changes and like personally uh it took me a while like at least a year of talking to people uh other influencers backstage at shows um kind of like pre-conversation like we're having a conversation right now and um and really thinking a lot about it and talking a lot of people about it before i before i made a change so and that's because i have at least a 30 percent uh 
traditional men, cisgender men clientele. And I was nervous because I was like, well, I'm not going to just raise their prices necessarily. I'm not going to drop other prices. I didn't know what to do. And uh, so I thought I, you know, I figured out what worked for me and I feel good because I'm able to, I feel good about, you know, like a new client coming on to our website and they see that I don't have a men's haircut and a women's haircut separation. And I think it's, like, let's talk about one, um, why is it important to not have uh, the distinction between men and women's haircuts? So why don't we just start there? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, and to go with your story, I I don't think there's a right or wrong. Um, well, there's there's definitely a right way to go about it, but there's no like wrong way to go about it. It's just, you know, what works for your business essentially. And um, I, I think when it comes to, okay, we got to, okay, we got to change our, we got to change our prices. Okay. I have men prices and then I have women prices. Well, it's just, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, bottom line, because we don't have um, women's uh, beauty salons, like just women's beauty salons where they get their, their hair done once a week, you know, and then the men's barbershops where they get their hair done once a week and their hair washed and everything. Because back in the day, they, even before they had plumbing in everybody's houses, that's where you went every week. The women went to the beauty shop and the men went to the barbershop. And, um, traditionally women, women's hair takes longer. So like the way, like they would get their sets done or they would get their, their hair washed and styled and everything. It took longer. So sure. It, it's going to be more money. Right. But it's kind of like, that's not a thing anymore. Um, everything's kind of a hybrid now, even barbershops um, that they've kind of really stuck to the old fashioned sort of um a lot of them have really stuck to the old fashioned, like men's only grooming. Um, but even so, they can't really legally um, refuse service to a woman, you know, if she wants to get, you know, a buzz cut or, or a clipper cut of sorts. So it's something that's definitely evolved that I think we're seeing a lot more now when we should have already seen it, in my opinion. Um, but I think it's something that people are becoming more and more aware of. And what I like to tell like my clients or my, my friends or, or people who have questions with it is, well, it, it should just look like it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a huge shift. It shouldn't be like, like, oh my gosh, I'm raising my prices. I need to tell everybody. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be anything like that. I don't think it should just be like, Oh, one night I changed my men's prices to say clipper cut instead. And then I added a shortcut in there and then a medium and a long cut, you know, and just call it a day. And then from that day on, that's, that's your pricing. And it could be the same. Like, like you said, you don't want to, for your clientele, uh, for example, you didn't want to like up their prices and like make them mad while also making this change and like trying to be more forward thinking with your business um you could just keep that as a cut you know like oh that's that's a clipper cut and then you know make a shortcut that's what i did first i did clipper cuts and shortcuts those are like my first cuts that i did and then i did a long cut and Clipper cuts, it, it, for me, it was time oriented. I mean, I don't do time-based pricing because that's a whole different thing. But for me, I'm like, my difference between clipper cut and shortcut was time. So my clipper cut was someone who's going to take me 15 minutes, like a two on the sides, four on top, blend, get out the door sort of thing. Um, and then my shortcut, sure, we might clipper it, but you know, it's going to be a scissor cut on top. It might take a little bit longer. They might want a shampoo. That was a, the biggest, honestly, the biggest difference was like, oh, they shortcut includes a shampoo. So like little things like that, you know, so that's the way I think to start it. <laughs> so I think uh, for anybody who's listening to this, I'd be or watching, I'd be very surprised if 
they haven't heard this conversation come up before. Uh, now, just in case they haven't, or in case the conversation has come up only in a way in a way that doesn't really kind of get into explaining the why, uh, you you kind of touched on it, but I'd like to add uh, my personal experience is I, if I have a client who, you know, for years, uh, I didn't even think about it. It didn't even cross my mind. It was kind of like the front desk book. Like I'm in a salon. So like, I don't book my own appointments really. And so I never even thought about it. You know, that was more of like a salon owner or, you know, it wasn't, I just wasn't part on my radar. And then, um, and then the conversation started coming up more and more. I started doing podcasting, which meant that I was in the room with people that were having these conversations, you know, other influencers. And and it is part of the a conversation that's going on social media. And that made me think about it more and more and more. And then one day I had two clients back to back and they were literally the same haircut. The difference was their gender and their price and that's when i was like okay and now it just like it hit me it's it's i saw it and uh and i was like i can't i can't go on we can't go on like this uh this is not cool and um so that for me it was that's that was the reason to change it it was more that i'm doing two people had the same haircut that paid different prices based because they were different genders and and uh, then I was like, okay, that's where, that's what people mean when they say pink tax, like, right, like, that's, that's what I'm seeing. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's the reason enough to have this conversation, you know, you don't necessarily have to have like social political beliefs that necessarily support this uh, as much in my opinion, I think that this is just kind of like a human conversation like I, why it has nothing to do absolutely with politics at all, or anything other than the fact that I'm like looking at two people with almost the same haircut that are paying the different, different prices. And that, you know, that should make other people who are listening and watching this, that should make you feel bad. Like you yeah. should feel, you should I feel, feel like bad. It's, like, <laughs> it's, definitely, it's definitely like a moral issue. It's not a political issue. It's not a whatever issue. You know, for me, it's like, Oh, are you a nice human or, or, you know, are you kind of, rude like right or, right. Mean or whatever and you might not think you are right like it's not like you're trying like like how you were saying that one moment when you had those back-to-back -back haircuts you were like it like clicked and you were like oh and it is one of those things i think that it's just you have to have a moment you don't know until you know you know so like you have to have a moment where you're like oh this is what they're talking about um it's an experience that you have that that makes it kind of click but I always do like hashtag no pink tax whenever I talk about um, online about, um, uh, you know, women versus men haircuts because uh, it started with me with working with someone who had gender pricing. And I personally saw that they were charging double for uh, just because they were a woman as opposed to a man, there were even some men that would come in that had a little bit longer hair and like needed scissor cuts that were, sh were still being charged the men's pricing, which a woman would be even more, you know? So like, I was like, this is just like not cool. So that actually in that moment, that made me um, want to educate more salons because I was like why are you doing this like you just like you just did this haircut and then you charged you know 50 bucks and then you did this haircut which is about the same and you charged 95 like to for me it's a moral issue I'm like that's kind of messed up like yeah like I I wouldn't go to you like yeah. I just I just put it plainly I'm like I I wouldn't go to you because I'm not gonna pay 95 bucks for a clipper cut if i know you ch if you know you charge 50 <laughs> so did you something that came up and my came to my mind when uh, i was making this transition was like what if the client who has should have been making charging i should have been charged should have been paying less is like why are you charging me less and then i'm like well i've changed my prices i've taken gender out of price and you have a barber cut 
like I that, mean, that was a that is a pretty that's an argument that I get or not really an argument but a question I guess that I get a lot because then they're like oh well then I'm gonna lose money and well no not uh, sorry, not losing money I'm not worried about that because it's like right. only a small amount of clients and I'm gonna the amount of money is not gonna be that much but I'm more saying like I was worried that they would be like WTF right do I get like five haircuts for free to make up for you know, the last, you know, how many haircuts, you know, like, right. has somebody yeah, brought exactly. that up to you? Has that ever come up at all or no? Is, am well, I the first person? No, that? I feel like, I feel like I've, I've been asked that before. Uh, like, how do you, how do you address um, clients, I guess, who have been paying too much? And uh, I, I don't think it's as big of an issue as we put in our brains. Like, yeah, I, I don't feel like either. I feel like as hairdressers, we always like go through every scenario in our head of what our client might say or do or whatever. We like overthink totally. everything. And I think once that conversation even happens, it's like, I mean, I would gauge if you do have like a client that is like that, which I would say might be one out of a hundred, um, then you'd be like, oh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a free product or something. I don't know. Like something really <laughs> here, have, have a little token of my, here's a token of my gratitude for you being, um, such an awesome client. Um, I really appreciate you, you know, just telling someone you appreciate them goes a long way too. So, um, yeah. well, I feel well, like I you, it. it's fine. I feel like they're not, I don't think I like it's gonna most be most likely they're gonna be like, sweet. Thanks for finally uh thanks for that. Like I appreciate well, it, it. I feel yeah, like it'd be more I, appreciation than anger that they were paying more. Yeah, and I think I think um they're going, yeah, they're going to there's a lot to be said about being a little humble too, you know. So it's like, hey, I I just had this realization that like it was kind of messed up and I want to like do right by it. And just saying that just yeah. done. I feel like they're not going to want, you know, X amount of haircuts. They're going to appreciate the fact that you were just a little humble and you're like, Oh yeah. Like that's kind of messed up. So just kidding. You know? <laughs> yeah. for sure. So, <laughs> so what but, other yeah. type, what other type of uh, concerns do people bring up when, uh, when you have this conversation that we can, uh, we can address? Hmm. Well, a lot of people don't know how to price. Like ha they always ask like, well, how do I price it? Do I go to time-based or do I go to service? Um, and again, I feel like that has to, that's where it's like, there's no wrong way to do it. I, I think it's, it's whatever is, is good for your business because I think it goes by okay do you have 20 percent of clipper cuts that come in and then like the rest are are long cuts because it might look a little different because if you're if you keep your pricing the same for those clipper cuts but then you're raising it for long cuts then you'll have to have a conversation with you know 80 percent of your clients that oh i'm raising you know this and so it looks a little bit different uh, but vice versa if you have more clipper cuts than long cuts then you keep the pricing the same nothing really changes um other than the fact that you're gonna make a little bit more money you know if you have a long cut client but that's the biggest thing is i think that's what i work on with with businesses separately because it's like okay this business is this way like what's going to make the most sense to you and the biggest question that I get is well am I going to lose money and I don't think you are because I mean the biggest uh pushback is oh well if I charge a woman clipper cuts then I'm going to lose money um but I think morally you're going to be seen as someone who's doing the right thing and you'll actually get more people that way. And I think half the people don't know how to um, like book online or book a service, but if you make it so easy, like, okay, shortcut means I, I always do it like shortcut means ears and above and medium is shoulder length and above. And then long is like shoulder blades and above, 
And if it's longer than that, then I don't know, just talk to me. But um, <laughs> yeah. some people might have a lot of people, but me, I'm like, no, I don't have that. But, but yeah, so, it, you know, you make it easy and, and yeah. it like my client's book online. So then I, I, it has a little description, you know, like shortcut means this and it makes it easier. Um, and you're going to get more clients. I, I, I swear, like everyone I've talked to or helped with, they get more clients by doing that and it helps you time-wise too. So you might not have time-based pricing, but it helps you time-wise because you're able to book different, a little bit differently per service. And you're actually able to push more people in because if you're doing like a women's cut, you charged her $95 but she only took you 20 minutes, but you booked her for a women's, you could fit another person in there and actually make more. So like if you could fit two clipper cuts for 50 bucks in the same span that you would fit that long haircut or the women's cut, you made $5 more if it's 95 versus 50. So like, that's kind of how I try to visualize it for businesses. (laughs) So, you know, I spent a, so much, so much energy thinking about this. And, uh, you know, there are some things that came up that I felt like were not being talked about on social media. And this is more, this is a business conversation. This has nothing to do with gender at all. Um, the question is a customer that comes in spending, let's just say $50 and a hundred dollars. Let's just use those. If you have, so if a person that comes in $50 haircut comes in every two weeks and a person who gets a hundred dollar haircut comes in every six weeks, the value, the lifetime value of the customer or LTV of the customer is greater of the person who comes in and spending $90 every two weeks. Now, This is a very simple scenario and it doesn't always work out like this, but nobody talked about that. Like how much money do you make on this person per year? And the person who comes in more frequently, arguably should pay, not necessarily pay as much. I mean, this is like a business conversation. This is not hair. I'm just saying like in general business 101, take away your feelings and emotions and take away the hair and all that stuff out of it. Like if you can get a person to visit you more frequently and then you can afford to lower their the their price because you're going to make more money on them. So imagine you have a 10% moth profit margin, you're making $5 every two weeks versus $10 on a hundred dollar haircut every six weeks. Well, the six week of time person's only going to come in six times, right? Six times. No. How many many times are they going to come in? Seven times, right? Huh? I think it's seven, right? Yeah. So six times seven, 32, 42. Yeah. Yeah. So So they're going to come in seven times if you versus a person who's going to come in 20 over 20 times, you know, so like in a, in any other business, someone may say, Oh, have this frequent flyer miles, uh, frequent shopper bonuses, um, uh, earn points every time you buy and get like discounts. Like, I mean, that's everywhere. Like every cafe I go to every sh- uh, fast, casual dining restaurant I go to. And I don't understand why no one's had this conversation about pricing and haircuts. Now, when you take this concept and you apply it to this conversation, you know, it, it, there, there are other factors to consider, you know, there's how much time it takes you. So how many people can you do per day and uh, how much, energy and I don't know, whatever, you could come up with all these other variables that come in. I'm curious, like, as I'm saying that, uh, I wonder, you know, what you think about that, just from, just based on what I've said. What um, your- Actually, I'm like in complete agreeance, because that's kind of what I mean, when I say it is actually what I mean, when I say, aside from like, how many people can you squeeze in, and that's like a visual, Another visual is, yeah, how how much money, how valuable is this particular, um, not client, but how valuable is this particular service um, in the grand scheme of a year? 
And you're right, a clipper cut or a shortcut, the $50 cut, whatever that is, that service is going to be more profitable in a year. Usually most people who get shortcuts come in every two to four weeks. And most people who get long, long hair services usually only come in like, I mean, they'll come in every eight weeks if if you really push it that they should, but most of my long hair clients, I see them like two to four times a month or a year. Yeah. So, um, so you're right. It, in the long run, you're going to make more money by, by having, <laughs> having those different types of services and knowing how to book them. And um, yeah, it comes down to like, business one-on-one I think it's just if you take away client if you take away that you're not quite dehumanizing but but taking all that away because of the grand scheme of it, it business is you know black and white it's paper it's what's in green what's in red and how can you be profitable it's more profitable to keep a client than to find a client totally so I mean it costs way more money to find people so yeah, if you can do those little things to keep clients, I would do it. And that could be one thing if you're super, super nervous about you have a lot of clipper cuts or a lot of shortcuts and you're like, I don't know what to do, or I might have to raise their prices or I might have to do this. You could do like a, um, uh, like a frequent flyer, whatever. I actually used to do that at my barbershop. I don't do it anymore because, uh, I have a whole other um, thought process on like discounts and things like that. Um, but I, I would do something like I product is so cheap, right? In the grand scheme of things to me, giving away a shampoo bottle is way cheaper than me actually doing a haircut. So I, I would much rather, Oh, you come to me often. Let's give you like, I don't know, free pomade or, that's, you know, every 10 times you come, you get a free pomade and then you never have to buy a product. So, you know, yes. or, oh, yeah, or something. Like I that. like that. That may, oh, never have to buy. I like that. You come in, if you come in enough, you won't have to buy a product that saves them money and helps. Okay. So and it actually is, saves you money. Cause then you're not, you're not doing a free haircut. You right. Know? I guess yeah. it's kind of feels like a win-win. Yeah. Um, so what are your, just kind of like take a detour. What are your thoughts on discounts since you said you have a different. I, um, well, I, I've just, I'm not about discounting your services. Um, I don't think it's in the long run. I don't think it's smart to discount, uh, services because a lot of times, um, clients will expect it or, um, you get the wrong type of clients. So it, it goes back to like what your target market is, right? So who's your target client? Um, is your target client someone who chases the, the discount? Then sure, do discounts. But we typically, unless we work for those types of spaces, salons that, that do that, um, we typically aren't that type of stylist, right? So um, you're not going to make your rent if you do that all the time. Um, the only reason why those big places can do it is because they have volume. <laughs> so, um, but I don't like discounting services because it puts you further and further in the red and we are, a, we're, we're all human, right? So it's harder for us than like a car place. Say you're going and get your car fixed and they charge you time and they charge you whatever they need, you know, product or whatever. For us, we can't do that. We, I mean, you and I, or people who are business minded could probably do it, but mo the majority of the hairstylists can't do that. They, you, it's like this guilt thing. Like we have like, I, I always, I, I just call it like Catholic guilt, right? Like, it's just cause I come from a Catholic background, but it's like this guilt, you know, like, Oh, I, I gave Susie 10 bucks off. I'll just, I'll just give Lisa 10 bucks off. Like, it's just this thing. So then you're going to keep discounting and discounting and discounting. I just don't like it. I I'd rather things be black and white. I'd rather keep a strong, firm, uh, price, my 
my clients always know what it is. They don't think that I'm discounting, like, why am I over here discounting this person and not them? There's no questions about that. But I do have a referral program. Um, I don't pay for, um, I, I rarely pay for per, like promotions or ads or anything like that. Most of my stuff, my whole like 12 years of doing hair has been word of mouth. So referral programs are number one and it's all product based. It's not service based. So, um, I always give away product because for me, an $8, $10 shampoo is way better than me giving away like a 50 to hundred dollar cut. And it hurts my body. Like, why am I like, you know, it doesn't hurt my body to give a shampoo away. You know? So, so yeah, so that's kind of why I do that because we just, it's better to keep everything black and white, like referral program. Okay. You refer your friend, you get a free product. Oh, you come in twice a month. Okay. Every two, four, six, eight, like twice a year, you get free product, you know, so things like that. And I feel like I, I keep my target market that way. I keep my target clientele that way. And I, I'm not accidentally getting those, those people who are just chasing the, the dollar, you know, yeah. or chasing the, the discount. Cause you're never going to see those people again. Those aren't lifetime clients. So. Right. Well, um, going back to something earlier, you, uh, what was it you said? We were talking about lifetime value of customer and an argument for why you why one should consider adjusting their prices to not be gender based is because the most valuable service uh, i guess you know and so we don't talk about clients as being more or less valuable um the more valuable service is the service that you can do faster even if you're charging less money for it and not faster to not faster for the sake of fast. It's just, you're producing high quality work. It's just doesn't take you as much time to produce this. It would make sense to try to attract more clients like that, that want that service. Yes. So by, by adjusting your service, price, like the way you label your services, you're opening yourself up to be more friendly towards people who are specifically looking to not be charged based on their gender. So that's also, there's another argument right there. That's straight business argument is like, there's a group there. How large is this audience, this, this demographic? I don't know, but there is, depending on where you live, it might be larger, or smaller. Um, I don't know how one would go about finding out how large that is, but you know, and uh, I know that they're in the DC area. There's enough people that would be, would have this thought process. Would they come to our salon? Would they even consider our salon in the first place because of our location? I don't know, but anybody who finds themselves on our website and they find themselves on my price list, they're not going to see a gender-based price. And I'm hoping one that makes people feel like it's a safer space for them. And two, uh, that's the main reason I'm doing it. But two, in this conversation, we're having you I could also say, well, it's also beneficial towards me and my business if I'm booking uh, booking haircut uh, services that I can do more of and uh, have a higher profit margin over the course of the year for or at yeah. least a higher, higher, higher revenue, at least, um, for the, for the year. I think that's also another argument that one could make, uh, why one should do this. Uh, so uh, how about like this point, like you ever have anybody transition to time-based pricing instead yes. of uh, service-based pricing? Yes. And it's even something that personally I've like kind of gone back and forth with, um, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's right for me, but there are some people that I think it's right for. And I think it's more right for those who have longer services, um, like extensions, for example, or color services. I think it makes more sense um, because then you're not accidentally not charging enough. You know, then you can find out how much does it cost per hour for you to work your business on top of what's the average amount of product that you're going to use 
to do this service. And then how much do you want to make on top of that? You know, so then I feel like when it comes to larger or not larger services, but longer services, um, a time base is more appropriate. Um, and I've actually recommended a couple, you know, people to do, do it that way, because when, when you look at, there was one in particular, when you looked at their, um, like P and L their profit and loss, you're like, oh my God, like you're spending so you're like using so much in product. And this happens so much. I see it in the forums all the time, like where people are like, how much do you charge? And, and I hate those questions, but that's a whole other thing, but how much do you charge? And then it's like, uh, I found out that I, I use this much in product and this and this, and I only made 20 bucks on that color that I spent six hours on, you know? So it's like, it's, it's smart for that, but you have to know, you, you have to know how much, you know, you need in that. I think it's smart now for barber world or, you know, cut world. I don't know. I don't know if it is unless you take longer, but for me, I can do a clipper cut in 20 minutes. So I could do three clipper cuts in an hour. And like you said, I can make a lot of money just busting out clipper cuts in a day if I wanted to. So it really just depends on who you are, who your who most of your services are, and how much you what kind of services you want to do too. Because I mean, I had a friend who doesn't like doing clipper cuts. And so, and so she made her pricing, like say a hundred bucks for women's pricing. And then she made it 80 for clipper cuts. And that was really, really high for her demographic um, or for where she lived. But you know what? It made it so she got, she was a little bit less in women's. So it made it so she got more, you know, of those longer haircuts. So it really just depends. It's like a whole thing that we could like talk about for right. hours and hours and hours. Um, because it really just depends on like who, who you want to see in your chair, essentially. It, so, uh, when I, you know, starting out, uh, I was, wasn't, you know, the people like everyone coming into this industry, they got so many things to think about. Like when I was coming into this industry, I was just thinking about being really good at hair and wow. uh, getting people to like me. You know, that was like the two things that I cared about. I just wanted people to like me and people to like my like and I didn't want people to like my work. I wanted to do good work. And to me, that's different because I can not try to be good but still want people to like my work. I know. So like my goal was to be the best and for people to like me. Now there's like so many things to think about uh, more so than ever. And I kind of feel uh, bad for some, for especially like the younger rising stylists. I think it's too much. And I think that- That's what I was going to say too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's too <laughs> much. Too. I, <laughs> um, however, with that said, you know, I never really thought about this conversation. And, and like I, you know, said earlier, I never, it never really crossed my mind because like, it was never on my radar. I was always focused on like the person in my chair, what I'm doing and the front desk took care of it. And then I got my paycheck at the end of the, at the end of the two weeks. And so I would say that when I, someone's in my chair, I, I, if I, if I book 45 minutes for, I try to book 45, everything on 45 minutes and an hour i mean it'd be lovely if i could book everything on the 45 minutes except for like a single process color i book 30 minutes application for that and then i book 45 minute processing and if all my appointments are booked at 45 minutes at all it's like perfect tetris score you know you can like load up your clients and when you're doing chemical services and non-chemical services it's really important to think about this like if you're not doing chemical services then you don't have to worry about this but uh you know, my book is so traditional, typical, stereotype kind of salon uh, type of services and, and, and type of work I do. I probably do 80% uh, of my clients. I probably do maybe less than five haircuts, you know, in that, that I tweak according to them. But like, really, it's like not like a wide range. And um, 
So anyway, I, my point is that like when I have someone sitting in my chair and I know I could do their haircut in 20 or 30 minutes, I still give them the entire 45 minutes. I've also almost, you know, I had a period of time I wasn't in a high end salon, but it was still like an upper, upper middle level uh, uh, salon. And, um, and it was always about like the service side. It was like, so it was like, oh, just because I can get their hair done in 20 or 30 minutes doesn't mean I should. So like, I'm gonna take my time, talk to them, you know, build a relationship with them. And some people wanted to be out as soon as I could get them out. So I wouldn't talk to them much, but I'd still book the same amount of time because like I wasn't booking my appointments, the front desk was. And over time I could adjust and put like notes. I only need 30 minutes. Oh, I need more time for this person. And, uh, but ultimately it was more about, it was less about the length of the hair. It was less about the amount of time I spent on the hair. It was more about the customer. The amount of time I spent on the customer, uh, had our, the, what I needed to give this customer had more to do with how I booked them than, than how I could make money relative to the amount of time. So like, I, I, I think that a lot of these time-based pricing conversations commoditize our services and my service is not commo is not a commodity like my service is catered to each individual and uh so that's the challenge i have with time-based pricing and the other part i have is uh I had a conversation with, and I'm curious to know what your experience is with this, uh, where I was talking to some uh, independent stylists, people who work in suites uh, or or rent booths. And um, so they're, all this is on them, you know, as an individual. It's not on me because I'm part of a team or a salon, although ultimately I made my decision by myself and no one else followed me when I did change my prices. But ultimately, like I had all these people to talk to about it. And a lot of these other people I talked to don't. And I, it was like, someone was saying, oh, I charge, you know, I book 30 minutes for a barber cut. I don't know, call it a clipper cut. I booked 30 minutes for a clipper cut and it took me 20 minutes. And, but I charged by time. So it's like, I don't know, let's call it a hundred dollars an hour. I charge 50 bucks. So it's a 30 minute slot. And, uh, or let's call it, um, make it an easier number. Call it $60 an hour, a dollar a minute. And I book thirty dollars for a third for a clipper cut because they typically take me. And I finished it in twenty minutes, so I was like, "Oh, it'll be twenty dollars today." And the client was like, "Well, you always charge me thirty. Just because you finished early doesn't mean I should pay less. Here's thirty. Here's the thirty dollars plus your tip." And the the person I was talking to was like, "That was so cool, that client." And I, I, I like flat out disagree. Like, I don't think that was cool with the client at all. I think that that's the problem. Therein lies another problem with time-based pricing because that conversation could have been flipped and it could have been the customer nickel and diamond me for the 10 minutes or the five minutes that I finished quickly. And then I'm not incentivized to move quickly. So therefore, am I just taking my time to charge up people's bill? Anyway, I'm curious to know if, I, you know, your thoughts on yeah. this. Yeah, that's a, I mean, I have so many thoughts on it. Um, uh, and I feel like they're relatively, we're, we're kind of on the same um, uh, wavelength, so to speak. But um, my first thought is I always like to think about what the customer's thinking, right? So, so when it comes to time-based pricing, when it's for, that's why I always say, I feel like it works better for longer services because when when you get into uh when you get into shorter services like that then yes like you're like you're gonna have clients who are like oh are you gonna work on me more like if i if i was a client that's what i would think like are they gonna try to like like prolong this um and then it's confusing because then it's like well okay if i can get my stylist not to talk as much then we can, I could get out in 20 minutes, you know, like, <laughs> we're like, Oh, Oh, George is talking a lot today. Dang it. I'm going to have to spend two, 10 more dollars. Like, you know, some of us are talkative. <laughs> that would be so me. I'd be like, Robert, stop talking. Every time I go like this to talk with the scissors in my hands and they're like, they're like looking at the scissors, like what the hell are you doing? 
Yeah. Get back to work. Yeah, like, go back to work. Stop not cutting my hair. Like you need to keep going. That's how I am. So I'm just like weird. I'm just a weirdo. And I I I don't like sitting in the chair. I'm like a weird hair person. Like I I'm like in and out. I I don't wash me. I don't even care. Um so <laughs> That's what I would think. I'd be like, man, I only gave myself 20 minutes. I got to get back to my shop and like do some hair. <laughs> now you're talking. Now I got to pay you more because you're right. taking off. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't agree with that when it comes to like shorter, shorter services, because it just doesn't really work. Yeah, um, and, and yeah, and you're going to confuse clients that way. And then, and then it, again, it doesn't make it black and white. It just makes it like really wishy-washy. And then you're going to have like cute little old Bob who, you know, takes forever to even get in the chair. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, and that, you know, you're going to feel bad. He takes an hour because. Like, do you start charging them? When do you start charging when they sit in the chair or after they go into the bathroom and made themselves some coffee or got yeah. whatever? <laughs> you know, like Bob has to go to the bathroom first. It's going to take him 20 minutes to go to the bathroom. And then it's going to take forever to get in your chair. Yeah. Like it's just, it, I don't think it, and then you're going to feel bad. You're going to be like, oh man, he made me run over, but I'm still only going to charge him 20 bucks because he's, he's cute and old, you know, like yeah. we're again, it comes back to like, we're human. We have this like, if we don't have someone at the front desk, like ringing us out who will charge it and not like think twice, we will have those things that it, the more we can eliminate those things from happening, the better, because the, I mean, we are a human based industry. We're not like, like, we're not like a car tech, I don't know, car mechanic, whatever they're called. <laughs> Obviously I don't yeah. do cars, but, uh, <laughs> Like I'm, we're not mechanics where you just roll the car in and you do it and then you leave. You got to like, there's like more, there's more to it. So we have to think about ways to make our lives easier so that we're not sitting there like, oh gosh, oh, like I, I just, I just don't, it just, yeah. It just like makes my brain go psycho to even think about like time-based pricing for a short uh, cut because of those little instances. Right. And it kind of reminds me of like what I did. So I, at first I had everything included with my cuts. So like shampoo, um, styling all the stuff, right. For my, for all my cuts. But then, like you said, I have some people who like, are like, get in, get out. I do not want to wash. I am like here on my lunch break. Like I want to ski. So I actually charge them 10 bucks less. So, um, I do like a regular, like shortcut price. And then I do a shortcut with wash and style. And then I do medium cut, medium cut, wash and style. So, and I call it a dry cut and I call it a uh, wash and or cut and wash is basically how I do it. And that for me has worked phenomenally because my, my shortest time slot is 30 minutes, which is just the short clipper cut. And then my longest time slot is actually like an hour and a half for like a precision cut. Um, but yeah, I'm like you, most of my stuff is 45 minutes. All the ones in between those are, are 45 minutes. Um, but uh, that's how I've made it work because of how I do things. I have half my clients don't want a shampoo. So, but if most of them did, I would never do that, you know? So it's just, it, it, it has to be so tailored to like yeah. what you're doing. And I guess to speak to like the young, the young, the youngins, the, the younglings, uh, <laughs> younglings, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they uh it's hard like it's hard yeah because you are you're just trying to be liked you're trying to figure out who you even want in your chair because you still might not even know like what you like to do um but that's why i think it's important to keep it keep it all open um you don't want to specialize in something right away unless you know for a fact like like i have a new um I have someone who's relatively new who rents out one of my chairs um, on Saturdays and she primarily does extensions. She's really good at extensions. She loves it. So like she knew though, like right off the get go, she's like, that's what I want to do. Um, so that makes sense. But like, if you don't keep it open because like, I didn't even know I liked color. I thought I was just going to 
do clipper cuts my whole life. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I really love doing color. So it's just, you got to keep it open and don't overthink the pricing <laughs> at first, you know, don't make it gender based, but don't overthink it at first. You don't need dry cut versus wet cut versus wash versus not wash. Like when I first started, it was shortcut, long cut. And that was it. Like, actually, when I first started, if we're going to be real with the barber shop, it was just one clipper cut $20 done. We didn't have shampoo bowls in there. It was an old barber shop. So you just got a clipper cut for $20. S started there. And then I was like, you know what? We need to add a long cut. And, you know, you just, you kind of see what works for you. But don't overthink it. Just know what you need to make and go from there, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So I think um, this has been a great conversation. I think we've talked about a bunch of different ways uh, in which you can charge and, uh, you know, whether it's uh, having, like for me, what I do is I call it a barber cut instead of a clipper cut because I was thinking about like a haircut you get and you would, when you think of barbershop, those haircuts, that way it doesn't necessarily have to be a full clipper cut and um I don't have a special price for people who just want the barber style cut. If you, if you want a better price than what I'm offering, go to a barber shop. Uh, you know, so like I got the barber cut and I got a haircut with blow dry style. And that is for everybody else that works for me. Um, time-based pricing based on you, I'm sure you can see based on what we're saying. Um, that wasn't something that worked for me. That's not something that worked for you um, necessarily, or maybe it does, but you've also worked with people uh, at other salons where time-based pricing did make sense for them. So the bottom line is that there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, but the one way that we're saying is you should probably reconsider and probably not do or definitely not do is charge two people two different prices for the same haircut or the same service just because of their gender and uh, that i think um, i'd be surprised if anybody disagreed uh, i would love to, if you leave a comment below maybe we can have you come on the show and you can explain why that you should do that because we're talking about two the same two haircuts that are the same you know we're not talking about nuances of different haircuts but i would love to hear someone uh have a when i would I mean, love to hear someone's argument why we shouldn't do that but that's what we're I, saying yeah i'd like to uh i'd like to also point out too that in i can't remember how many states but i know for a fact like three or four states at least there could be way more um, but it's illegal to have gender-based pricing. So like in California, for example, and in Colorado where I was, um, it's actually illegal to have gender-based pricing. So that's another thing to consider too, um, is to make sure you're not doing something illegal now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't and I mean, these, these laws like that have come over time as our society has evolved to uh, be more open and considerate of people who do not fall within, you know, the tr the categories that we had back then. And uh, now that world is opening and changing, so are the laws to support that. And I, yeah, I agree. And I, I just hope that that's not why people change. But like, yeah, I guess if if you don't want if you don't want to change, just know that you could end up with a lawsuit. And uh, you know, or some other sort of infraction that you'd have to deal with. And I hate, I, once you get caught up in any sort of like legal stuff, it's just such a nightmare to get out of. Uh, so yeah, if that, if you're, if another thing that we talked about motivated you today, maybe, maybe that, that will, um, I'm curious to know when the first time that something like that goes to court or something, uh, that, that would be quite the story to follow. Uh, but until then, hopefully that no one gets to that point. Uh, because everyone's paying attention and, uh, you know, and seek reaching out. So if someone needs to, you know, want some advice, uh, can they reach out to you and send you a DM and ask you questions or maybe even uh, hire you to help work through the whole process or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can, I, I'm totally open to answering questions. If anyone wants to shoot me a DM, um, I have no problem 
helping in that aspect. And then if you want anything further, um, yeah, you can hire me for consulting or, or anything like that. But if you have a few questions you need answered also, just shoot me a DM. Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, thank you for your time. And I think this uh, conversation, this is the, the first in depth, uh, it's a relatively unique. I've had a couple of conversations about this topic, but uh, I would say that this is the one, the first one that we really kind of dug in and in depth. And uh, so I appreciate, I appreciate that. And as we sign off, is there any last thing that you want to say uh, before we, we close out? Oh my gosh. Um, I guess my last little thing I'd love to say is uh, something we already covered, but just like, don't, Try not to overthink it. We are a community of overthinkers. Uh, creative people just love to overthink. So just try not to overthink it. First, think about what you need. What do you need? What's the bottom dollar that you need to make? And then think about who you see in your chair most and then kind of go from there. So don't overthink it. And um, it's all going to be okay. Just don't do gender-based pricing. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to talking again soon. Yes, likewise. <laughs> All right, take care.